Department of Truth, number five. Uh, oh, holy yeah. shit. <laughs> this, again, this one was almost my pick of the week. I believe this is your pick of the week. Yeah, this is my pick of the week. So, again, we are we are um, jumping into the mind of Tinian. Um, and in, in perfect fashion, when we feel like we have our foundation set, our feet are settled, he turns it upside down. <clears throat> and so... <laughs> Uh, basically in this book, what we find out or what we're proposed is, is the department of truth really the good guys who really is the good guy? Really? Like, are there really established good guys or are we all bad guys or are we all good guys? All bad guys. <laughs> Ooh, that one. And, and so what we find out in this book is. Black Hat, the organization Black Hat has been following our main character, has actually actively trying, have been trying to recruit him before the Department of Truth. <clears throat> but Department of Truth pulled a, a fast one on them and essentially um, got to him first and recruited him first. And Cole, I think his name is Cole, um, <clears throat> he is reeling from his the previous. Say so what? I said, whose husband's name is Maddie. Oh. <laughs> like, literally, his cell phone rings and it says Maddie. Um, basically, Cole is dealing with the aftermath of the previous issue, which was he had to kill two innocent people who were actually onto the, like, like onto the trail of the Department of Truth via Black Hat. And so he is still reeling from his actions which is he killed them he had he was ordered to kill them so that the truth would not prevail or the lack of truth would not prevail <clears throat> and uh so he's dealing with that and when he gets to his house when he gets to his apartment the founder of black hat is sitting in his apartment and uh basically has a little chat with him and, and puts so seeds of doubt within cole's mind Asking if he really thinks that he's working for the good guys, if the Department of Truth really is the Department of Truth, and what best interest the Department of Truth has. Is it the truth of the American people in the world, or is it for their own interest? And so we learn about the history of the Department of Truth through Black Hat's eyes. And if we're to believe what this guy is saying, the Department of Truth is just as corrupt. Um, and so Cole, at the end of this issue, is essentially at a crossroads he can't figure out what to do do you continue to work for the department do you walk away do you work for black hat and then the craziest thing about this issue is when black hat is basically convincing him that he's working for the wrong side his manifest his manifestation of the monster man with the star, uh, upside down pentagram carved in his face shows up and goes hi cole um <laughs> let's let's have a chat <laughs> fucking creepy dude um uh, this book is just insane um and i can see why this this book is probably going to become a tv show probably on hbo or amazon um but basically we leave this book ends with cole questioning everything uh wondering if he really works for the right guys or if he should be doing this at all and <clears throat> i mean we've moved so quickly. Like we really don't know what, what is real, you know, like the rules of this, of this universe are very trippy. And so I feel like, I know you have more to talk about it, but like, I, I just, I left reading this book going like, what is real <laughs> and where are we going? Right. Well, and, and that, yeah, that's the whole point. That's, so, you know, one of the things that I like about this book so much that it, it took me a minute is is the art. Uh, the first issue, when I read this, I was like, I like the story, but the art's irritating. Because the art is completely abstract. There's nothing in this book that's just straight up just a panel. Right? Like, mm -hmm. everything is like faded and... Uh, there's splatter of paint and l hard sketchy lines no one's face is really made out to be obvious it's almost like it's disorienting and that's the whole point that's the whole point yep when you're reading this book you feel like you can't sometimes i feel like my eyes literally can't focus like i can't 
get a concrete hold of what's going on here. And I think that that is perfect for what this is. Yeah. Um, and I almost feel like uh, the, with the previous issues, as we've been going on, seeing a little bit more about how the Department of Truth works and, and black, how Black Hat works, it's like, okay, like, setting starting to feel established. And I was enjoying that because it was comfortable, right? Like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm starting to figure out what's coming on. Uh, things are starting to become more clear. And then all of a sudden this book came comes out and it fucks all that up. Yep. It, everything you thought was going on isn't necessarily the truth. It's not as cut and dry as it is. The art in here was like extra sketchy and fuzzy and blurry. And it gave me that same frustrated, uneasy, like, feeling that i had after the first book mm. um that's why i liked it so much is that literally just after five books in it was already like reinventing itself almost or or reestablishing what made it good saying like you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna get a, a finite hold on what's really going on here no. until, until he wants us to and twist <laughs> yep. um, also it looks like <laughs> Is that supposed to be uh, Jesus on the cover of next month? Oh yeah, I don't know, dude. Like, uh, I I feel like this book is like the definition of trigger, especially with like what we're dealing with in our country right now. Like, I almost feel like this book is so like it's almost too much on the nose, right? But at the same time, it's like no, you write with you write about what you're dealing with in your current moment, right? And like mm -hmm. this book is the personification of what we're dealing with right now in our country with people just literally believing that there are people their their democratic leaders are eating babies and drinking their blood at the bottom of a pizza restaurant <laughs> like <laughs> fuck uh but you know That's tinian awesome. tinian is playing off that idea and i think that he's about to become uber rich um, because when this thing turns into a TV show, everyone's going to watch it. Everyone's going to watch it. Um, and, uh, you know, if it falls in the lap of HBO, I think it's going to be done really well. Shit. If it falls in the lap of Amazon, it's gonna be done really well or even Netflix. But, um, this is just insane. And, uh, it, it, I always, every time I finish this book, I'm like, fuck. Like it just hits hard because of what's going on right now with our current state of politics and social con, you know, social, um, commentary and all that shit. So, uh, you know, we say it again about, we say it a lot, we say it a lot about a lot of the books that we read, but department of truth should definitely be one of the books that is on your pull list. Um, it's a fantastic read. Tinian knows what he's doing. He's, he's having some fun and, uh, he really knows how to world build. And then, like you said, he knows how to make you feel very comfortable with what you're reading. Like you've established it. Cool. Let's go. And then he's like, ah, and just turns it <laughs> the other direction. Completely away from you. Yep. So that's department of truth. Number five, Maddie, I know you're really, uh, you're really excited to get into it. We will definitely figure out a way for you to be able to read this. Cause I think it's definitely down your alley. I think you would like it a lot. Um, and for any of y'all that enjoy that kind of stuff, Definitely check it out. Tinian is killing it with this series.